Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of You Need This Book In Your Life, the Sunday evening book show where the host more than compensates for his lack of sex appeal by contributing a great deal of love for books. And this week I am going to be talking about Naomi Klein's book, This Changes Everything. Now this is an oldie but a goodie, let's say. I first started talking about this back in 2014. And if you don't know the work of Naomi Klein, then let's just say that the, the discussions that we see in politics now and in society about things like the Green New Deal, you see Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, for example, talking about the need for a Green New Deal and this massive sort of coming together of peoples and finance and jobs that needs to happen if we're going to successfully cli fight climate change. That all comes as most uh, significant movements do. It comes from an intellectual heart that comes from people like Naomi Klein, who's a public intellectual who's extremely intelligent. I have a slight schoolboy crush, but that's not immediately relevant to this conversation. And back in the 90s, she was writing books like uh, No Logo, which was about um, consumer capitalism. Well, fast forward about 15 years or so, and This Changes Everything is a book about how consumer, cat consumer capitalism is fundamentally at odds with uh, the fight against climate change. Now, if you think about it... Klein lays it out at the start of the book very clearly. Um, all of the forecasts currently for the future, if we let uh, global warming go above two degrees, are pretty cas catastrophic. We don't like to look at it, we don't like to think about it, it can be too horrifying to even focus on sometimes. And Klein makes that quite clear. She says it's easier, part of your brain just wants to shut down and not engage with it at all. But unfortunately, if, uh, if her son is going to see a moose, which is one of the things that she talks about, will her son never see a moose? And if the future generations on the planet are going to have the quality of life that we had, then we need to do some fairly fundamental changes. We can't... The time to kick the can down the road is gone. It's no longer... <laughs> those days are done, essentially. So we know how bad climate change could make our standard of living, or even remove the fact of our existence from the planet entirely. So why aren't we doing anything about it? Why is this not obvious? And for Naomi Klein, the answer lies in the way consumer capitalism is currently coded into the way we look at the world, the way it's coded into our laws, the way it's coded into our public institutions, even the way that we think of ourselves as people is affected by uh, capitalist thinking. Um, so what Naomi Klein advocates for in This Changes Everything is uh, a wholesale change to the way, not just that we live our lives, but the way we think about ourselves, the way we set up our societies. Now, what does that look like? In the political arena, it would look like things... Don't obsess over GDP. Gross domestic product is just a measure of how much you can make. It's not a measure of how healthy your society is or how happy the people living it are. It's not even a message, uh, it's not even a measure of how healthy they are as individuals. It's no good for quantifying human happiness or human sustainability. Uh, if you're looking at social change, then it's things like public transport needs to be good. It can't just be an option that you park there for the people who you consider to be suckers and who are too poor to actually buy their own car or lease their own car. It has to be something that is worthwhile using. Take, for example, London, where public transport is good and is actually used. Um, in terms of psychological change, we need to stop thinking about ourselves as these sort of ugly, atavistic little units wandering around the world trying to rip each other's eyeballs out for the, next, uh, for the next few bucks. We need to move away from that idea that someone else's gain is my loss. We need to get an understanding of ourselves, which mercifully has happened a little bit more over time since the virus has come about. We need to start thinking of ourselves as a species of people inhabiting the same planet. That's what we need to do. We need to change the way we look internally as well as externally. Now, this isn't just airy-fairy, wishy-washy thinking for uh, old hippies like me who like to sit there in their offices thinking about utopia. There's a lot of stuff in there around history and economics. 
now it goes into the Industrial Revolution and how the Industrial Revolution began the process of releasing carbon into the atmosphere but also generated enormous wealth at the same time. Now, now that we know the source of our wealth is essentially in choking the planet, what Klein advocates for is this idea of polluter pays, where oil companies, for example, which are some of the most lucrative companies in history, pay towards the cost of greenification. Now, you may argue these days, certainly in my own industry, um, Shell Energy, for example, has started to move away from purely oil and moved into sort of domestic energy supply. Yeah, great, but it's just not fast enough at the minute. What have we got? 12 years left? The clock is ticking, so gently greenifying isn't going to do, isn't going to be enough, essentially. Um, and there's a lot in there that's quite interesting about the, the magical thinking that comes with the sci-fi based solution. The idea of carbon capture technology or uh, global cooling through injecting a load of sulphur into the atmosphere. Um, it's really easy for us, having grown up on so many sci-fi films where the heroes have an idea, it's really easy for us to think, oh, the scientists will sort it. The scientists are trying to sort it. They're on the sidelines telling us what we need to do and people aren't listening because it's not convenient to the way we live our lives currently. Now, Again, if you think this isn't necessarily something you buy into, the most telling thing that Naomi Klein brings to my attention is the people on the right, the people on the, the kind of libertarian economic right, know that the scientists are correct. You can tell this from the way they organise themselves. The Koch brothers and people like that have been funding anti-climate change measures because they know Naomi Klein and her ilk are right. Ultimately, we are going to have to change the way we look at capitalism if we're going to survive as a species. It's not in their best interest and it doesn't benefit their bottom line over the next fiscal quarter to do it. However, it still needs to be done. So that's why on the, the libertarian right you have this dumping of money into stay as you are, drill baby, drill type thinking. And that's why people of progressive mindsets need to get with the programme and start not just talking about but acting on climate change and demanding it from our political leaders as well. And the inspiration from that comes from people like Naomi Klein who write exceptionally well written books with a brilliant turn of phrase which are engaging on every page. Um, so again, the question is always do you need this book in your life? Well, as usual, hell yes, you need Naomi Klein's book in your life. It's beautifully written, it's essential, it may or may not end up being one of the most vital books of the century so far. So I would say get a copy in your life. I'll leave a link for purchasing in the description of this video if you're interested. And I would also invite you, as always, to leave a like, subscribe, share this far and wide on your own social media channels. I could use the coverage if I'm being completely honest. And if there's another book that you'd like to see me read in the coming weeks, you may by now have guessed the kind of things I'm into, um, then let me know in the comments and I'll use my next Audible credit to read and review it and share, a, share my love for a book that you've recommended, perhaps. So engage everyone, it would be very much appreciated. Now next week I will be talking about another book which is optimistic about the future, which is Utopia for Realists by Rutger Bregman. Um, I won't give you too many spoilers, but it's a book that almost reduced me to tears the first time I read it, and even though it achieved that, even though it's about things like universal basic income, which sounds boring, but it's incredibly exciting. So tune in next Sunday at 8pm, and I will see you all very soon. Cheers everyone. Bye.